everybody. Um, welcome to Losing Your Job, Finding Your Way, and Making Your Art with Jordan Wong um, as a part of our second annual Midwest Design Week. My name is Ashton Spann, and I volunteer as co-vice president for AIGA Cincinnati, um, one of the 70 plus chapters of AIGA, the Professional Association for Design. The whole event would not be possible without the help of our and support of our sponsors this year. Thank you so much to Sachi and Sachi, um, University of Arkansas Graphic Design Program, Trade is on Call, Salesforce, Declan Moneypenny, and the rest of our sponsors uh, for Midwest Design Week. Um, we are grateful for your support and honored that you have entrusted us to fulfill our goals for Midwest Design Week in a meaningful way. I'm very excited to introduce um, today's speaker, Jordan Wong. Jordan Wong is an artist who loves to inspire and delight others through illustration and graphic design. He is fascinated with moments of triumph found in Asian art, namely Japanese anime and manga, comic books, and video games. These inspirations have fueled the creation of large-scale illustrative il installations and public artwork throughout the city of Cleveland. Jordan has also exhibited, exhibited his work at the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh in 2020, the Akron Art Museum in 2021, and he was featured on Graphic Design USA's People to Watch in 2021. And he is currently also the president for AIGA Cleveland. Now, without further ado, um, Jordan, I'm going to go ahead and hand things over to you. You can go ahead and share your screen. Okay. Well, first things first, uh, thank you all for uh, joining me uh, this, this afternoon. And, and big thanks to, to Ashton of AIGA Cincinnati. Uh, without her, I wouldn't be doing this. So uh, she played a, a really crucial role in, in providing me this opportunity. Uh, another big thanks to all the supporting chapters and sponsors. Yeah, to make this all uh, possible. So thank you. Thank you. So again, my name is Jordan Wong, and I work full time as an artist. I'm based in Cleveland, Ohio. And everything began when I was a, a little guy. Uh, as Ashton mentioned earlier, uh, you know, a lot of my work is based off of the things that I fell in love with as a kid, comic books, video games, anime, manga, all of those, you know, imaginative uh, stories and, and, and heroic characters. And I'm so lucky and, and, and grateful that the things that I loved as a kid are now what I do as, as an adult and as a profession. Um, sharing those weird imaginative ideas uh, with others as, as these large scale installations. Uh, again, my work is really illustrative. There's also moments of, of uh, you know, these graphical minimal elements and iconographies that I like to play with and use them as, as metaphors. And I'm always trying to just, you know, bring some, some color, some imagination, some energy uh, to new places and spaces uh, for those to enjoy. I currently have some work up at the Akron Art Museum, and I am actually uh, the first artist to take over their garden space. So I have works outdoors, uh, five installations, one of which is actually on the side of the museum itself, as well as uh, some works that are on view in their indoor gallery. It's featured in uh, GD USA as one of the people to watch in 2021. And I'm, I'm lucky that Cleveland Magazine uh, considers me uh, interesting and was featured as one of 30 uh, people uh, that were, yeah, considered the most interesting uh, in the city um, uh, last year. I serve on the board as, AI, as the president for AIGA Cleveland. And last but not least, I'm a tango dancer and I've been dancing for about six years now. So to sum it all up, I draw, I design and I dance. So I want, I want to share uh, with you um, kind of the, the beginning of, of, of my career. Um, and I, I, I believe this might resonate with, with a lot of people. So a let, uh, about eight years ago, uh, I graduated from college uh, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, lived there for 20 years, and I went to uh, school uh, at California University of Pennsylvania, 
I kid you not, that's that is a, a real university. And I graduated uh, with two degrees, one in graphic design and the other in marketing. And at this time, especially in, in Pittsburgh, um, there was a huge focus on on responsive design, web design, and uh, if if you could code, you pretty much you know had uh, great chances in, in getting hired and finding a job. I, on the other hand, had no interest in in, in coding um, or or anything like that. Responsive design, you know, inter interested me and. Uh, yeah, I would, you know, create works that would, of course, fit those uh, different um, contexts and presentations. Uh, but I was mainly interested in, you know, logos, identity work, uh, and of course, illustration. Um, I felt really confident about my work, especially, um, you know, the fact that I had two degrees instead of one and just was really optimistic um, when it came to going into the real world and, and beginning my career. Things ended up uh, a little bit differently. Um, and that confidence uh, was quickly uh, shaken. And for two years, I could not find a full-time uh, position. I remember sending out you know, countless resumes, cover letters, and even getting a um, you know, handful of, of in-person interviews getting to that, the, you know, well, we're down to like you and another person uh, and only to receive uh, the email uh, that said, I'm sorry, you know, we enjoyed your work, but we, we went with someone else. Um, it was a discouraging two years. It was a, a, a time of, of being kind of lost uh, as far as like, what am I gonna do like as for a job? Um, but in those two years, uh, I, even though I didn't have a job and I wasn't given work, I still needed to, uh, you know, do something, right? So instead, I took on my own clients and, and uh, took on uh, other little contractual jobs. I taught digital illustration at a small arts organization. I even tried my hand at a little bit of sign painting for uh, this uh, grocery store chain. Worked as a gallery attendant at the Andy Warhol Museum. And I exhibited my, uh, my own work at like art markets, selling um, prints of, of my illustrations, as well as uh, showing some original works, ones that were you know, sm on the smaller side to you know, a little bit bigger. So even though I didn't have a job uh, those, those two years, you know, I was still working, I was still creating, I was still finding opportunities to you know, take those, those weird ideas and, 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 and get them out there and, and share them with others. And it got to a point where I would go out to art openings and different events, and I would pretty much know every, everyone there. Um, so really thankful for all the, the, the opportunities that I, that I had at, at that time and the different people that I worked with. But then it finally happened. I finally got hired. My first full-time uh, design uh, job, uh, I worked for a, a studio um, uh, here in Cleveland. And, and at that time, receiving that email of, of yeah, we, we, would, we would love for you to join our team. Uh, I thought, this is it. This is where my life begins. I'm leaving Pittsburgh. I'm relocating. Like Everything's going to be fantastic. This is, this is uh, the time that, yeah, everything starts. Didn't work out that way. Um, eventually, uh, I, I realized that, um, you know, I, I wasn't really fulfilled or, or happy, uh, you know, doing the work. Um, I was kind of stressed out with, with how much was, was given to me. And I just became increasingly unhappy. Um, I wasn't doing uh, my personal work anymore and really uh, just stressed out over, um, you know, all the work I had to do at my job. The weird thing was uh, at that time, I, I never really admitted to myself that I was unhappy. You know, I kept creating excuses in, in my head like, oh, this is my first job. No one likes their first job or, you know, this is, yeah, 
you know, uh, this is where everyone kind of cuts their teeth, you know, in, in this junior position and, um, you know, things will get better. Maybe I'll give it a year. And I just kept creating excuses and, and, and denying the fact that I truly was unsatisfied and, you know, stressed out and again, unhappy. So I'm back in Pittsburgh uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, just visiting for a weekend, having a beer with, with my friend here, uh, Joe Marock, who's a fantastic illustrator in Pittsburgh. He goes by Red Buffalo Illustration. Definitely check him out. And we were talking about, you know, our, our, our work, our careers and where we want to uh, end up. Real quick, before I continue the story, I just want to point out my buddy Greg who's just creeping here on the side, which I don't know how he snuck in, but uh, he's, he's a rascal. So again, Joe and I were, were, were talking about uh, where we want to be in our careers. And this was the moment that I finally admitted, man, I am not happy. I'm not happy, you know, where I'm at. I'm not, I don't think I'm getting paid well. I'm not really enjoying the work anymore. I'm stressed out. I haven't touched my own work, you know, uh, since I've started. I just am not happy with where I am right now. And I thought about those two years that I didn't have a job, but I was, I was, you know, essentially working for myself, doing my own thing and all of the different people that I met. And even the time that I was employed, um, I spent a lot of time connecting with, with different partners and, and vendors and contractors. And I really enjoyed that aspect. Um, and that's when I realized that, man, I'm, I think I would rather work with people instead of for them. And the universe, universe must have been listening because that Monday when I returned to Cleveland, I got fired. I got the, the email of, you know, oh, do you mind staying after work uh, to have a quick chat? And yeah, they said, uh, we're going to have to let you go. So here I am at Crossroads, um, you know, do I stay in Cleveland? Do I move back to Pittsburgh? Do I try and find another job and, uh, you know, apply to other places? Or do I do the crazy thing and, you know, maybe have a go and, and start working for myself? So I did the crazy thing and started, <laughs> started uh, you know, working for myself under the name Wong Face. Uh, and at, at this time, you know, in my head, I was thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my 20s. I'm not married. I don't have a mortgage. This might be the time to, to really take the risk and, and go for it. So in those early years, uh, I did a lot of the work uh, that, you know, probably you all are, are familiar with or have done, you know, creating logos, crafting identities, I took on illustration, uh, uh, commercial illustration projects, you know, uh, creating things for like posters or printed marketing materials. Sometimes I got fun projects, you know, like this one, uh, illustrating things that we printed on coffee cups and, you know, live out in the real world and people could like walk around and, you know, enjoy it. Uh, and other times I would combine uh, both disciplines of, of illustration and design and um, be interested with the, the whole look for uh, different events, you know, creating, you know, the, the main uh, hero illustration and having that kind of unfold into these other, um, you know, presentations or, or merch or other, you know, printed materials. And I remember a lot of the times that I would meet people, uh, they would not actually have any, you know, needs for designer illustration, um, but that didn't really matter to me. I, I was, I really wanted to prioritize connecting with people, you know, and having a, a relationship and connection to them. And later uh, down the line, I found that, you know, when they did have that that need, I was the person that they thought of. So they'd be like, "Oh yeah, like." Hey, I, I uh, actually do. I'm working on this project and, and could use some design work or they would know someone um, that could be a potential client. Uh, a, a good example of this was actually when I was back in Pittsburgh and it was whenever I was looking for a job and I applied for a position with this restaurant group known as Big Burrito. They um, had uh, an opening position for a junior designer for their restaurant uh, chain, Mad Max. 
and I did not get picked. Uh, it was down to me and another person. Uh, that other person had more experience. I went with the person that had more experience, which I totally understood. Um, but instead of kind of, you know, uh, uh, being too hurt by that or, or um, being upset by it, you know, I thank the, the, the art director um, for, for his time and, you know, just said, uh, you know, would love for you to, to keep me in mind if, if anything else, um, you know, pops up or if there's any opportunities. So several years later, you know, this is when I'm starting to, to work for myself in Cleveland. I get an email from that art director saying, hey, I hope you're doing well. I hear that you're in Cleveland. Uh, we have uh, this illustration need and we think that you'd be perfect for it. Uh, so they do this like seasonal uh, uh, menu item, which is called the uh, go Goblerito. And it is a Thanksgiving inspired burrito. So it has like turkey and mashed potatoes and corn and stuffing and comes with like a thing of uh, like gravy. Um, and they, people love it. And they, they kind of promote this thing as, as this monstrosity, right? So they've been playing around with this idea of, of the Goblerito being a, a turkey kaiju. If for those that don't know what a kaiju is, it's, it's uh, essentially like a giant uh, monster in, in Japanese culture. So like Godzilla. So I had to make this Godzilla turkey thing. Uh, and I thought, this is perfect. I grew up on Godzilla. I like, uh, you know, I, I love this stuff. Um, so this is the, the illustration uh, that I created for them. And it, you know, it was used on t-shirts and, you know, table tents and you know, in their, in their menu and all sorts of things. And I think they are still using it to this day. Uh, so I, you know, finished the gal burrito for them. They loved it. And then, uh, you know, a couple of years later, they're like, Hey, we love the gal burrito. We're still using it. Uh, can you make a little small, cute version, you know, uh, uh, for our, like for our kids menu and things. So I then uh, created the, the gal burrito junior. So at this time, especially in the beginning days of, of working for myself, uh, I realized quickly that it was hard to work out of my apartment and I could not get anything done. Um, and I've had two studios in my career thus far, and I actually have paid zero dollars on, on the space. The first uh, um, uh, place that I had my studio was with this uh, art gallery and and kind of um, you know, grassroots art store called Canopy. Uh, they had studio spaces that, uh, that they rent out to artists in the back, along with an exhibition space. And then again, storefront where they sold a bunch of art prints, originals, um, and, and things from local artists, as well as uh, artists uh, uh, that they knew on, on the West Coast. So in exchange for my studio space, I designed, uh, you know, some of their posters for group exhibitions, as well as the, uh, you know things for uh, the solo artists uh, exhibitions as well, and other um, you know needs that they that they had for just promoting the the space and and having people rent it out and, and use it for events. The second studio uh, that I then moved into um, was with spaces, so. Canopy uh, eventually closed and I was, I was in this position of like, okay, well, I need to move my studio. I need, I need a new space. Um, and I connected with the executive director of Spaces. And for those that aren't from Cleveland, Spaces is another uh, arts organization. They do, you know, quarterly um, exhibition programming, art residencies, uh, different grant opportunities and are just um, a phenomenal resource uh, for artists in Cleveland. So I met with the executive director at that time uh, and, and we were both serving on, on some other different committee and she, um, you know, saw some of my work at, at, at an art show and she asked me if I'd be interested in creating the, the benefit invitation uh, for them that year. It was great working with with her and and um, and you know the the other team uh, members. 
And I asked them, you know, I'm looking for a studio space. You know, I know that, you, you know, you have, you have uh, some availability in, in, in this different workshop or this different studio. Um, have you thought about uh, having uh, a dedicated designer to create, you know, things for you? So that led to me uh, entering uh, this, this partnership with them. So in exchange for, again, studio space, I was creating uh, uh, designs for them. This included their program guides to also, um, you know, um, uh, things for their special events as well as uh, the identity for their satellite fund, which is one of the, the artist grants uh, that they do. Um, you know, creating the whole uh, type outfit, playing around with some messaging, you know, kind of uh, creating uh, other things that would be printed out, you know, as signage and to promote it. Uh, other elements, you know, taking uh, the, the hexagon of, of the logo and creating patterns out of it to, you know, maybe print it, print it out things or, or leave behinds, seeing how this stuff plays with social media, posters, you know, and, and these things printed out and in context to also swag. And those, those things that, you know, people could, could take with them. Uh, and the reason the, that I share, you know, this, you know, these two examples is that, you know, there's, there's value uh, to, to what we do and, you know, we can get creative in, in ways that we uh, exchange it. It doesn't always have to be for money. Sometimes, you know, you can work out these uh, uh, agreements uh, where you're just, you know, where you're compensated uh, just as much as you would be, you know, through cash. So the last two years, um, there's been a big shift uh, in my work and it all kind of started with this public artwork. This was done by uh, a friend of mine. His name is Justin Michael Will, a uh, fantastic illustrator and artist uh, here in Cleveland. And I saw his work in Cleveland Public Square uh, years ago. And I just thought, man, this is so cool. I mean, I've been a fan of his work for, for a long time, but to see it brought to life at this scale and also in this in this prominent place, it really inspired me uh, and, and kind of put me uh, on the path of, of wanting to put my artwork on walls and make my artwork huge. So I think it was like a year and a half, maybe two later, um, uh, I was presented the opportunity to you know, create something for that very spot. So the question that, that I get is like, well, how, like, how, how did you, how were you able to do this? Like, you know, how were you chosen for this? Um, there's a public art um, agency here in Cleveland, they're called Land Studio, and they do, uh, you know, a majority of, of the projects um, here in the, in the city and surrounding areas. And a lot of people kind of assume that I, you know, applied for a call for artists or, or, or I reached out to them directly. And the truth of the matter is actually I played the long game and, you know, it was, it was through a, a series of, of, of connections and meetings that I was able to, um, you know, connect with them and, you know, receive the opportunity. So to go through this super fast, uh, I spoke at this um, innovation uh, conference. It was one day, it was called Pitch Neon, and um, a woman in the audience, um, you know, came up to me and, and said that she really loved my work and would love to get together for coffee. At that, uh, you know, that coffee meeting, she mentioned to me uh, this, um, this organization called Midtown Cleveland that's doing, you know, these different public uh, artwork projects. Uh, so I reached out to them to schedule a meeting. Um, and, and just explore possibilities of working together. And it's from that meeting that they actually invited um, someone who was working at Lance Studio, uh, to which then I asked her specifically about that, that spot, um, like who, who kind of organizes it, who, who curates it, um, you know, who, who's essentially the person uh, uh, that I need to reach out to um, in, in uh, being interested in that spot. 
so I got then the context of, of, of those two individuals um, and their, their names are Aaron and Vince. And I invited them both out to um, another art show that I was doing. So I knew at this time I had no public art experience and I needed to earn the trust of, 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 of you know, of I can do this. The work, you know, Will, will look great presented at, at this scale. So I created um, this, this three uh, piece series called uh, Pantheon and exhibited it at just a local coffee shop uh, called Loop. They have like a record store uh, on the second level and, and it, it overlooks this, this giant wall. Um, so again, I, I invited Aaron and Vince from Land Studio to, to come check out the work. Uh, and, you know, to potentially uh, seeing if there was any opportunities for us to work together. Apparently, I've already been on their uh, radar. And, um, you know, when, when it came time, I felt very confident to say, I would love to create something for that space. And then six months later, uh, I had my first public artwork installed. So I'm in this weird transition point uh, where uh, I'm moving away from design and illustration and really focusing on moments uh, where I can create my, my own personal work and, and enter you know, this contemporary art world uh, and really dedicate to these moments of, of sharing, you know, again, those weird imaginative thoughts uh, of, of, of creating large scale moments of, of, of color and, you know, um, imagery that's inspired by Asian art to also small moments uh, uh, that people can, can experience. Uh, to sharing those things that I, that I love as a kid and, and still love as, as, a, as an adult, these two works are inspired by the character select screens uh, in, in, in video games, but are also kind of a metaphor for who do you wanna be as a person? you know, in the world. And I'm so fortunate to um, just do this work and inspire and, and delight others. Uh, people ask me like, how do you, how did you get this opportunity with, with the museum? Um, and I was, I was talking to the deputy director and she was sharing with me like, oh, Jordan, like, you know, you've been on our radar, we, we you know, we, we love your work, but really one of the reasons uh, that, you know, we wanted to go with you and exhibiting in the garden, garden space is we just like you. And that right there totally um, just proved to me, you know, all of, all of the things that I believed in as far as like having real relationships with people and, and you know, really investing those that you work with. So real quick, I want, I want to talk about, um, you know, this, uh, this thing that I experienced growing up because it, it really connects to, to the work. And that's, um, you know, uh, I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood and I was, let's see, in my graduating high school class, one of, or yeah, one of five out of, so one of five uh, Asian American students out of 600 students, again, predominantly white. Um, so growing up, I, I never felt um, truly American. I was always considered um, foreign or, you know, kind of like an, an other, uh, but also I don't speak Chinese. So I'm, I'm second generation, um, you know, born Chinese American. And I don't speak the language. So going to family dinners, grocery stores, or, or even, you know, uh, Chinese restaurants, I, all, I always felt kind of, um, you know, uh, on the outside of, of those experiences well. Uh, and, you know, not being Chinese enough to be Chinese. So I, I always existed in, in this, this third space. And... Those feelings, you know, uh, have, have really uh, kind of inspired the work today and, you know, led to me exploring and, 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 and you know, kind of uh, 
you know, retranslating uh, different uh, imageries, design elements, um, you know, uh, themes of, of Asian art. Again, um, this could range from, you know, things like Chinese watercolor paintings to, again, uh, Japanese anime and manga. And, you know, picking out things that, that, that resonate with me and, and using them in, in, in my work. And it has presented me with uh, some really incredible opportunities to inspire uh, the next generation of, of uh, Asian American artists, especially with having works uh, like this um, in Cleveland's Asia Town. And it's so amazing having this stuff out there and just how, how it's received and uh, how it resonates um, with, with other people. Uh, this uh, guy, his name is uh, Alan Pung, and he's um, he's from Pittsburgh. We uh, actually, my family went to his family's restaurant whenever it was open back in the day, uh, and he's he's visiting Cleveland, and he's he practices martial arts, and he was inspired to, you know, uh, st strike some poses and and, and take some photos uh, next to the work. Um, the piece has also uh, shown up um, during the uh, Stop, Asian, Stop Asian Hate March uh, that happened here in, in Cleveland and was used as a, uh, as a rendezvous point for people to meet and, and participate in the march. So the, you know, doing this work and, and given the opportunity and having it in these like very visible and public spaces has allowed me to connect with you know, those that come from a, a similar background as I do. And it's even um, presented me the opportunity to connect with those that have felt the same way of like, yeah, you know, I, I don't really speak the, you know, the language. And I always felt like, you know, kind of uh, alone or, or isolated. And I'm, you know, now realizing that, you know, this, this experience that I had younger and thinking that I was completely alone in it, um, is not true at all. And others have experienced very similar things. So there are a couple of things I, I want to share um, uh, before wrapping up. Um, because one of the things that, that fascinates me, especially going into this, this, this new type of work and, you know, leaving the, the design and commercial illustration side of things and really kind of entering more of the, the contemporary uh, art um, side of things. Um, you know, one of the things uh, I, I, I always kind of reflect on is like, man, how, how do we get to do this stuff, right? Um, and I think it, it boils down to, you know, the, the three things that um, every creative professional wants and, and how those three things connect to this much larger thing. So I'll, I'll go through them. So the three things uh, that every creative professional wants is that we wanna do work that we're passionate about, that we love and, and that we just are obsessed with. We wanna be recognized and celebrated for that work. And we wanna get paid for that work we want, we want to make a living uh, doing this, this work. And I thought about this, you know, and, and in regards to those, those three things, and I could not figure out a way in which you, you cannot have people part, you know, of, of, of those, uh, those three crucial things. You know, it's people that experience your work. It's people that resonate and, 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 and feel emotions when when they when they see it it's people that make the decision to invest in it you know whether it's you know through money or even just sharing your work you know kind of uh, being the the champions for your work and when it comes to people you know people support and they invest in those that they know and care about right this is why you know some uh, someone will hire their friend's nephew over uh, a seasoned professional who's been at this for, for like, you know, over 10 years. Um, but one of the big things is that people support and invest in those that also care about them. So this idea of, of, of relationships is huge, right? They always say like, oh, it's who you know, right? 
And I, and I think that's, that's true, but that's, that's only one half of it. It's, it's also, you know, how they feel about you and, and what kind of, you know, relationship do you have? Right. And one of the biggest parts of relationship is that trust, right? I think trust is, is, is the answer to a lot of the questions of like, Oh, how did that person get that opportunity or, or how, how do I propose one logo concept instead of, you know, three or five or presenting these options. Um, trust is huge in, 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 in this type of work um, because art and creativity is risky. It's so risky. It's subjective and you don't, you know, it's not formulaic and it's, it's not guaranteed. It doesn't guarantee success. Um, so earning trust is, is, is really, really crucial uh, in everything that we do. With that, uh, I think it's it's really important to to consider this, and and this is for those that you know are um, really actually you know this this is for everyone. Those that are, are starting out to those that um, may have you know forgotten for, forgotten this. Uh, so people will always want to work with you uh, if they say yes to two questions. The first one is is working with you worth my time and money, right? Are you helping them uh, achieve their goals? Does your work create some sort of value uh, for them or, or those that they're serving? And can I trust you will do what you say you will and when? Um, again, that, that first one uh, really depends on, you know, your work, the quality of it, and also the, the context, you know, um, not everything is, is the right fit. Uh, but that last one is so dependent on, on you and how you treat others. And um, really this last one can, I think, weigh more heavily uh, than, than the first one. Because even if it's worth you know, the time and money to invest in, in a person, if you don't trust them, if you don't like them, if you don't just have a bad feeling in your gut about it, you're not gonna wanna work with them. So I think it's a great reminder for us to prioritize others, to treat people with, with compassion, uh, try to understand where they're coming from, um, to be patient with them, and to realize that you know, it's, it's not you working for them or you, you doing this thing for them. You know, it's, it's you both coming together uh, to create something. So I've said a lot of things and I'm sure all of you have listened to different talks and you know, we'll, we'll watch a lot of other presenters and you're gonna get a lot of advice, right? Or, or recommendations uh, on what you should do, should not do. Um, and it can, can be overwhelming to kind of navigate through. Uh, one of the things that uh, I encourage you all is, is to um, really listen to your gut you know, not in just like the, the things that you hear and, and kind of picking out what, what resonates, uh, but also the work that you do, right? People are always talking about like, oh, do the work that you love, right? Do the work that you love, find what you love. One, I don't think that you have to find it. I think it's within you. Um, a big believer in, in the things that James Victoria uh, talks about. And, and that's like one of them, like it's, it's all in you, right? Um, the next thing is, is this, this thing of like, you know, kind of figuring out like, what, what is it that you love? I think it's the stuff that makes you like sound like a crazy person, right? Like those little nuances that no one else like even uh, uh, realizes that they exist, but you, you are just like in it, right? You're thinking about this stuff at, at three in the morning and you're just obsessed with it. Here's an, uh, an encouraging example. Uh, there's a guy in LA who walks people for a living and he loves his job. And <laughs> it's, it's amazing. He's a people walker. So I, you know, when, whenever I think about like uh, the question of like, oh, can I do this? You know, is this even possible? Uh, I, I like to think about, about this guy. Um, and it's a great reminder that, you know, whenever you're able to share what you love with, with another person and it improves their life, it has them experience things that they've never experienced before, um, that's when it 
transforms in, in, into value. And that's when it transforms into something meaningful because it's not only, you know, affecting you and improving, you know, hopefully your life, but it has the opportunity to pr pr uh, improve others. And we are so lucky to have the opportunity to do uh, work um, yeah, that, that can have that effect. So again, I thank you all so much for, for spending your time with me. Uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, on my email. I'm also on Instagram at Wongface. And again, uh, really appreciate you being here with me. Thanks so much, Jordan. That was great. Um, you can go ahead and uh, you can yeah, stop sharing your screen. Great, awesome. Um, we'll wait a couple um, minutes here um, to see if um, as the questions start coming in. Um, but I do have a question I want to ask sure. um, to kind of kick things off. Yeah. Um, so you talked about in your in your presentation about um, you know your experience you know trying to look for a job and you know it took you two years to find a job and then you know you you know you got one and you're trying to you know get things going with doing your own work on your own. Um, how do you stay, how did you stay motivated through all those different like parts in your career journey um, throughout the ups and downs of, you know, finding work and, and that and pivoting and all that other stuff. It's like kind of, it can be very easy to get like down on yourself um, when you're like not getting those callbacks and stuff. So what recommendations do you have for people um, to keep the momentum going? Um. Two answers kind of come to mind. First is is um, you know surrounding myself with with people that were really supportive and encouraging. Um, during those two years, um, I had coffee uh, with with um, you know acquaintances who then became friends that had you know been working uh, you know as you know full time designers, art directors for a long time, and they they would check out my work, give me feedback. Um, but overall, just be really encouraging because uh, they remember what it was like when, whenever they just entered the world and had graduated. Um, also surrounding myself with, with other artists that were, you know, just uh, so passionate and, and hardworking in, in the things that they were trying to share with the world. <clears throat> so having those influences, I, I think, played a, a huge role with, you know, uh, keeping the, the motivation up. And another thing um, for me was just seeing possibilities, you know, uh, and kind of indulging in the things that I like and, and uh, being excited about how to translate that excitement into opportunities to, to share, you know, with, with, with others. Um, there's there's so many, there's infinite amount of, of, of chances that you can delight someone or inspire someone or make someone feel some sort of emotion, um, you know, whenever you put your, your stuff out there. And it doesn't have to, you know, necessarily be huge on a building. I'm just really lucky that the work has evolved in, into that and it, it feels like a natural fit. Um, but, you know, we come across beautiful stuff uh, every day every day, um, you know, to just like a nicely designed flyer. You know, I still notice those things and I'm like, ooh, look at that. Look at, the, you know, look at that move. I love what this person is doing. I'm now at a weird point where I'm inspired by like, like road signs and, and things that I see when I'm, when I'm driving, you know, like, I, like the, the roundabout uh, road sign, I think is really beautiful, <laughs> right? Um, there's just, there's, there's just tons of, of, of opportunities. And I think it's just important to, yeah, keep, keep open to those opportunities. And again, and indulge, indulge in what you, what excites you. Big urban planning enthusiast. So I agree with you on the road signs. <laughs> I do have a question um, and it's really centered around your career growth and mm -hmm what you see as your natural progression. So I want to hear from you how you interpret your own career growth and that being, do you see it as some sort of linear path with an endpoint in time? Or if you remember the good place, is it more Jeremy Baraby? Like where, where are we at right now? 
Oh my God. I love that you use that example, Jeremy Baramy. <laughs> yeah, thank nice. you. Nice. First of all, yeah, <laughs> great example. Um, yeah, definitely Jeremy Baramy, you know. Okay. Um, and if you think about it, like, uh, like life and, and, and existence itself is not linear, really, right? It's everything's weird, everything's uh, amorphous, everything's intersecting and circular. Um, so I don't know why we place such pressures on ourselves um, and, 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 and thinking of things so rigidly, like point A, point B, right? Um, I, I think that's that sets us up for disappointment and, you know, just, uh, I don't know, being discouraged. Um, I think it's great to have ambitions. I think it's great to, to you know, envision, like, what is it that you want to do? Um, but also, you know, they say, like, make a plan, but then forget it, right? So it's, it's, it's like this, this interesting balance of, of having intention, you know, being strategic, doing the work, but at the same time, letting go completely. Um, one of the things that I've been exploring personally is connecting uh, ideas in, in Taoism and, and Wu Wei, um, which Wu Wei translates to, um, I, I like the, the Alan Watts uh, interpretation, which essentially means no force, right? So how to do things effortlessly. You're still doing things, but how do you essentially get out of your own way? Um, how can you have uh, uh, big goals and ambitions, but at the same time be completely unattached to them? So those are things that, that I've, I've been really exploring. Um, and it's amazing what happens when you just take a moment and let things unfold, you know, um, stop and, and listen. Because we're always doing, 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 doing. I have to do this. I have to, you know... Uh, achieve this. Um, I think uh, uh, the American culture and, and, and you know, Western philosophies and, and, and ideas are, are really guilty of this. Um, and it can lead to, you know, uh, just some uh, unhealthy outcomes. Um, so again, I, I think it's finding opportunities to be fluid, to be soft, and to be open. A more practical oh, question. Caroline, you're on mute. Oh, I can hear her. Oh, oh. maybe it's just a me problem. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, a more practical question from Veronica. Did you paint the artwork on the walls yourself or did you work with a vendor that specializes in that? Uh, great question. Um, so me, I love working with people that are better at things than I am, right? Um, so... Short answer is yes. I, I worked with uh, fabricators, printers, and, and those that I entrust the work to. Um, but again, it's it's that it's 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 that um, component of trust, which is is really really crucial. Uh, and having a close relationship, you know, with um, those people that specialize in in these things, and them, you know, being dedicated to the work, you know, almost <laughs> sometimes more uh on their end uh but being dedicated to the to the work that you're trying to to share and put out there um i am more interested and passionate about and also better at creating the image the the artwork um but also it is my strength uh in in you know um in having those those strong relationships with with those that bring this stuff to life so yeah, I, I entrust it to others. Well, um, I don't think we have many more questions. I do have one more last one and then we can kind of get ready to wrap up um, with anything else you'd like to share. Um, but I was wondering, um, just out of pure curiosity, how the pandemic affected any of your work and you know, getting clients and projects and things like that and how you kind of manage that. Yeah, it's funny. Um, uh, GD USA actually asked me this, like, as uh, um, the people that they, that they featured in that article, the same question of like, you know, pandemic and uh, how's how it's affected things. Uh, for me personally, so I'll talk about uh, first kind of like 
career stuff and, and work. Um, I've been really fortunate in making this, this switch to the, the large scale stuff, the, the public works right before the pandemic. Because when the pandemic hit, that was such a need, right? People weren't going inside to museums or galleries, you know, to, to experience things. They were spending more time outdoors, um, which, you know, isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, and it was certainly a, a good thing um, for, for me because there was more um, focus and investment in things that were installed outside and, and large and for, for people to enjoy. Uh, so I was able to still, again, really grateful in saying this, I was able to, you know, still create work um, and actually experience some growth uh, during, during the pandemic. Um, I will say that personally, uh, the pandemic was also a blessing in that it gave me a chance to, you know, pause, to just sit and, and really think about things. Um, yeah. During that first year, like, I started practicing yoga daily, you know, um, and I've been, you know, trying to keep up with, with that. Um, but yeah, having that, that opportunity, uh, to enter those, those, those meditative, uh, spaces and, and, you know, ask myself those big questions. Um, I don't know if I'd be in the same place, uh, if, if it weren't for the pandemic. Um, and, I know it's, it's been a, a really challenging time um, for, for everyone, for sure. Um, and I'm just so grateful uh, to experience kind of like a silver lining, uh, you know, of it. Ashton, if you don't mind, we actually have another question that came in yep. for Jordan. Yep, go ahead. So, Jordan, Jorge asked us, what was it like when you first created an art piece and not knowing what to expect from the clients? Oh man. Sounds like a tough one. Yeah, that is, that is, <laughs> that is a tough one. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I'm, I'm entering this, again, this, this new territory where um, I'm given the opportunities where people say like, create your art. And I'm kind of, again, trying to um, craft those conversations and, and be upfront about expectations and, and, and what I do. Um, I remember like the conversations uh, regarding design work are greatly different than the conversations that I have now with uh, collectors or you know um, teams at, at a museum that are essentially investing in in me, in my vision, and what I want to share with the world, you know, versus being a designer um, and a commercial illustrator, you know, that other person's vision is really a part of, of what the work ultimately, you know, ends up being. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, and it can lead to some, some really incredible things. Um, I think when it comes to not knowing what the, the client, you know, will say or wants, um, find out, ask, right? Uh, the more questions you ask, uh, one, you learn more about, about them and, 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 you know, kind of get a sense of what's going to resonate and what's going to, you know, not land. Um, but two, it builds the rapport. It builds up the relationship, right? So instead of spending time on trying to to, to, to say all these things and convince them and, 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 and you know, uh, prove yourself as some sort of expert, uh, it's much, much more beneficial to let them do most of the talking and, and you know, be, be someone that they feel is, is there for them and is really helping them. And then, you know, they'll be more open to your ideas. They'll be more open to, you know, you know, uh, your expertise, your vision, uh, and how to solve their problems. One more question, um, sure. and we'll wrap things up. So in your opinion, which is the site creatives should seek to utilize most in terms of showcasing their portfolios and skills? Wait, do you mind repeating that for me? In, in your opinion, 
which is the site creatives should seek to utilize most in terms of showcasing their portfolios and skills? Like which website, I guess. Yeah. Which, website? Mm -hmm. which website? I think it's what, <laughs> I hate to answer a question with another question, um, but I believe this is how you end up um, finding out the answer. What kind of work do you want to do? Who's going to, you know, create opportunities for you to do that work? Where are they, where are they looking? Where are they spending their time? Um, again, my answer, you know, for things, that's, that's how I, like one of our, uh, I get the opportunity to talk with students or, or those that have questions on, on where they should go with their work. I, I always go back to the, the question of like, well, what is it that you want to do? What, cause that determines, you know, everything, right? Um, so focusing, uh, yeah, on, on, on that first, I think we'll, we'll guide, especially when it branches out, right? Like, so it's like, you know, what kind of work do you want to do? You know, who's going to experience that work? Who's going to uh, invest in that work? Who's already doing this type of work? Where are they all hanging? You know, they're all hanging out. Uh, what platforms do they use? Um, the, the, the answers will, will become uh, clearer for sure. I hope that that works. I know that's not, not a really good answer. I didn't really answer it, but I think it's more important for, for, for uh, you to, to find the answer instead of just being told it. Makes sense, makes sense. All right, well, that's all the time we've got for questions today. Thank you so much, Jordan. Um, I want everyone to do another digital round of applause, if you may, um, for Jordan Wong, thank you so much for sharing uh, your story and your work with us. Um, it was incredible. And I feel like uh, the rest of our audience definitely is walking away feeling inspired and empowered to go out there to uh, go out and do and make work that they love. So thank you so much again. And thank you to everybody in our audience for joining us today. Um, I would, uh, before we get ready to go, um, I did want to do another shout out for all of our sponsors um, for this year's Midwest Design Week. Um, so thank you to everyone um, to help to make this possible. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you.